You can get the live rates, but you can even get these kind of charts that show you the trends seven, 30, three, six, five days. Plus I'll show you how to get average rates and convert historic amounts as well. So key differences, Google can get the historic ones. In this file, I have other formulas that I've done where I've used conditional formatting and used arrows to say if it's increased or, or decreased. I've also extracted whether it's the last one in the month and a financial year parameter. And then here I have expandables. These are just pivot tables. So here you could say the month close as well, because that's really important, particularly for accounting sort of data, uh, what month it is. And finally, by financial year, here I can have the financial years, the closing rate as well of those financial years, and the trend as it's going on. You can edit the blue cells. So to be honest, if you're being lazy and you just want this file that I've pre-developed, <laughs> I can share it with you if you like. If you subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on this video, you can then have access to this same file. So I will send you a way that you can copy this file and have it in your itinerary. The last thing in this is how to convert historic, select a date, and then select other features around it and then it converts it based on that date. So Excel recently overcame a barrier, which was dynamic arrays, and they've been marketing this, that it's just such an amazing feat that they've done, that they can have one formula that populates multiple cells beneath that. Google Sheets, though, has had this for a while, and Google Sheets actually goes a lot further. In particular, for this example, is the Google Finance function. So Google Finance, you write it like this, and then you have these inputs, so ticker, you need to do it like this. It's very prescribed how you need to do it, and that's what's a little bit hard to remember. So you have to say currency, then colon, then you say EURUSD, so the three character currency code, and put them next to each other, no spaces, a space will not work, close your speech marks, and then close your bracket, and then it looks it up and gets you the live exchange rate. Over here, it tells you similarly to Excel where it comes from, although this one says it is refreshed every 20 minutes. So this is refreshed automatically without you needing to do anything. And if you click on the disclaimer, you can get more information about where it comes from, what the delay is, etc., etc., etc. Google for currency only lets you get the price. Now, you can click Learn More, and there is Google Finance here that allows you to, in theory, use an attribute that is price, price open, high, low, etc. And these work for stocks, including high 52, low 52, but they don't work for currencies. Um, not sure why, but from my experience, they don't. So what we can do, though, and this is really amazing, is we can leverage the dynamic arrays. So I can say equals Google Finance tab, ticker is currency, Singapore dollar, and then CHF, which is Swiss franc, close the brackets. Then if we want to activate the other ones, we can't leave these optional, even though they're square brackets. So we have to write price, because that's the only one that works for currency, comma. And then we can do a start date. So let's say we just want a spot rate as of one date. We can do just in speech marks, say one, one 2016 and this will work this will give me just the spot rate on that day it's actually the close rate on that specific day and it populates when that was done exactly the date time all right so let's do the dynamic arrays that we've been talking about so i'm going to do equals google finance and i'm going to do currency colon ils which is the israeli shekel and then JPY, which is the Japanese yen, comma, price, I have to write price, comma, and then I'm going to do a start date, so I'm going to do first, in speech marks, 1st of January 2015, comma, and then end date, I'm going to do today, so this is the today function, that gets everything from then until today, note I could have also put in a number of days, like in the hundreds and the thousands if you want to even. And then interval, for this you either write daily or weekly, or if you want the numerical version, 
you can write one or seven. I'm just going to write one like that. Don't need speech marks for the one. Close my brackets. It's loading because there's a lot of stuff coming. And look at that. It's populated all the way until row 1600. Every day it's populated what the exchange rate is. Isn't that cool? So I select the data and then I go to the data tab and choose a pivot table. Existing sheet, I'm going to go over here, press create, and then I'm going to add a row, date, untick, show totals, values, I'm going to choose close. You're going to see why in a little bit. I'm going to right click on date and choose create pivot date group and choose year month. I actually prefer that method to Excels. In Excels, you would have to do once for year and then once for month. Uh, otherwise, if you just do month, it aggregates January 15 with January 16, which is never what anyone wants. So you can do it like that. And then I don't care about a sum, so I change it to an average. Uh, reduce my decimal places if I want. And now I have the average rate by month, which is pretty cool. This is dynamic, so because I said that this ends on today's date, if I open up this spreadsheet tomorrow, it's actually going to have a new row of data and keep going indefinitely. I don't have to click the refresh button like I do with Excel. And also pivot tables in Google, as opposed to Excel, are automatically refreshed, which is really, really awesome. Okay, so other things to be wary of. So I did do at these stages, I did 1-1-2015. So Google takes your day, month, year based on where you're using the spreadsheet unless you overwrite it. And as you can see here, it's 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 11, et cetera, et cetera. Notice that it does kind of skip the 10th. It does skip uh, days that are not being traded, skipping one day every week here. So here it's showing me the US style dates, even though I tend to use the European style dates. So what you can do is you can go to File and then Spreadsheet Settings. And then Locale, you can choose UK. Sometimes it reloads it and causes a little bit of error whilst it's doing it. Or you might have to retype something in to get it to work. I can go even further. So I'm just going to copy this function, this formula. And then here I'm going to write a new formula that's equal Sparkline. And Sparkline in Excel, is a command on the ribbon. But in Google, it's a formula, a function. And that means if I paste this in, remember this is a dynamic array, returns multiple values. I close my brackets, and I get the trend in a nice, pretty little chart. Isn't that cool? So forward to what I have done here in current rates, I've got the seven-day trend, the 30-day trend, the 365-day trend where I'm using Sparkline Google Finance, wrapping it with an error for if it doesn't work, and then taking these things, the last three letters, where I can see the full name of the currency, which is quite useful, and then taking this one over 7, 30, and 365 days. Another thing that I love about Google is that it does have autocomplete. So if you have if you start typing, it gives you those. And if you use this method of having different words, you can either write the three-letter code like USD, it will give you that, or if I wrote UNI, United States, it would still give me that, which is really lovely. I love this autocomplete feature. Averages can go further. Another cool thing about Google Sheets is that you can get date pickers with data validation. So I can click, on, double click on that and get this to pop up that I can navigate there. It's done automatically if you just add data validation. So there's another thing that Google does that Excel doesn't.